In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today, all the readings, we can see them from different perspectives. One of them, we can focus on how to protect our homes through unity. But what I would like to share with you today is the obedient family of God. Find every single reading we read today is pointed toward our obedience to be the real family of God. So starting from the beginning, when we read the Pauline epistle from Romans chapter 16, just I will show, uh, share with you a couple of verses. Now I urge you, brethren, not those who cause divisions and offenses, contrary to the doctrine which you learn and avoid them. So he's telling us the family of God has no division. And he's telling every one of us in your own home, in your own small family, are you seeking division or are you seeking the unity? The very end of the gospel we read today, the Lord was pointing towards everyone and he was saying, this is my father, mother, and brothers and sisters, those who do the will of God. And then he was confirming once more, for your obedience has become known to all. And also the opposite. Your disobedience has come, become known to all. Which one we are choosing this morning? To be in full obedience to the word of God, in full obedience to his will in my life, then I am a living member of his body and his, his family. We'll find St. Peter was telling us nearly the same. He was telling us it's not only about being obedient to those who are nice and gentle. Peter was telling us be obedient also to the harsh for this is commandable. And he was telling us it's a joy to be obedient and especially within your family. Sometimes you are arguing that my husband is quite harsh or the language of my wife is quite harsh. He's telling me it's time to know for you personally to be obedient or to be loving more. Again, it's not an excuse for me as a harsh person to continue. It's totally the opposite. It humbles me when I see someone else is accepting my attitudes and in patience to the Lord to be obedient to the word of God. That's why he was telling them and in the end, uh, in the same chapter, at the very end, here is the example. It's the example of Lord Jesus Christ. How he was able to accept unjust people to send him to death. How he accepted unjust a decision in the end to send him into this and it was led by the religious leaders it was led by many of the Roman soldiers and Roman authorities he is telling you and me again are you going to follow the path of the cross or to put it aside those whom he pointed in the very end of his gospel today he was saying this is my brother this is my sister because we accepted to be in this full obedience and to remind ourselves, the very first verse in chapter 3 in second in first Peter, he was telling to wives, likewise, wives, be submissive to your husband. And then in verse 7, likewise, husband, love your, your wives as the weaker vessels. He's trying to tell us it's time to restore our families, to live this fullness of obedience to the world, to be living members of the family of God. As if he's trying to say today, from now on, this is a condition to be a member of the family of God. It's from day one, all of us will receive the sonhood and the adoption of God <clears throat> through our baptism and our chrismation. But he's telling me and you now, are you working on this sonhood or you put it aside and now you are behaving in a different way? Uh, at the very <clears throat> beginning in, in the book of Acts, Today, he was telling us, you need to know that St. Paul was ready to obey to this. People, and we read today from chapter 20 in the book of Acts, the people were very loving and sympathizing with St. Paul, and he did, they didn't want him to be hurt at all. He was telling them clearly, not, I'm not only ready to, 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 to be persecuted or to be tortured, I'm ready to die. Why? I choose to be the 
prisoners of our Lord Jesus Christ. Many times in his epistle to the Ephesians, especially at the beginning of chapter 3, he was saying, for this reason, I, Paul, choose to be the prisoner of Jesus Christ. What is this reason? The gift that he received, that he became a real son, adopted after he persecuted the church. And again, he is asking us this morning, do you see what he did for you in person? Or do you feel that you are righteous by your own and he did nothing for you? In many occasions when we think of what he has done for each and every one of us personally, we feel humbled before him, very humbled before him. But once I start comparing myself with others, I feel no, I'm better than many people. Maybe those who are in the church, I'm comparing with myself with every one of them. Or even at home, I'm comparing myself with my wife or my husband. He's telling us again, it's time to know. St. Paul was ready to obey to death because he knew which God he is belonging to, which God he chose to be his prisoners forever. Why? Because for this very reason, I am here. For this very reason that he brought me. He, I was too far, and he brought me closer to the Father through his blood. That's why St. John Climacus is warning us. If you believe that you are good enough, if you believe that you are obedient enough and you don't need to obey anymore, he was warning us, he who follows his own ideas in opposition to the direction of his superiors needs no evil devil to tempt him, for he is a devil to himself. Again, he's uh, uh, asking us and urging us, are you submissive to your spiritual father? Do you have a spiritual father from the beginning? Sometimes I feel I'm old enough. I'm mature enough, I don't need to confess. I don't need to seek or ask for guidance. Again, it's time to see, am I live, do I live as a living member of the family of God, or I have my own rules, I have my own life, I have my own instructions that I, I made it for myself, and I'm satisfied that I am following my own personal instructions. Then the, the psalm was telling us it's time to be joyful. If you are walking in this direction, if you are living this full obedience to the word of God, then victory and joy are yours. He was telling us, and now my head shall be lifted up above enemies, above my enemies all around me. Why? because I choose to be obedient. St. Paul said it many times, and even going back to the book of Exodus, Moses was telling us, when we choose to be under the coverage of the blood of the Lamb, it means one thing, we choose the obedience. In Exodus chapter 24, from verse 1 to 7, it tells us a very simple story, that Moses went up into the mountain, he received the commandment from the Lord, and the ones he is down, he killed the sacrifices and split the blood into two halves. The first half, he poured it on the altar and kept the other half. And then he started to tell them the commandments. All the Israelites said in one voice, yes, we will do and we will hear. Then he started to sprinkle the second half of the blood of the sacrifice on all the congregation and told them, now you choose to be under the covenant of God. Now we choose to be under the full protection of the blood of the sacrifice. Why and when? When we say we will do. We will do and we will hear in full obedience to the word of God. And some of the Jewish rabbis were commenting on this verse, which is verse 24, chapter 24, verse 7. And they were asking why for the first time and the only time in the Old Testament to say we will do first and then we will obey, we will hear. Because he said, those who choose to do first, they believe that God has spoken. Then they will hear an explanation. And if the explanation is satisfying or not, our decision is, we will do. Unfortunately, many now can say, if I'm not convinced, I'm not going to do it. He's telling you and me, it's time to know, to believe in him, to be a real obedient, to do, even if you are not convinced yet. Because your conviction, or to start to be convinced, it might take some time. But if you believe he has spoken, 
it means you choose to be in full obedience to his voice. Finally, this is what the Lord said in the gospel today. He was pointing and he said, but he answered them saying, who is my mother or my brothers? And he looked around in a circle of those who sat about him. And he is looking around us this morning. And he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. He is telling you and me, if you feel that you are alone, if you feel that you have no friend, you have no family, he is stretching out his hands and circling around us and asking every one of us, from now on you could be a living member of the family of Christ himself. But why St. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 19, he said, we were, all of us, aliens, strangers from the family of God. But now he brought us closer to him through the blood of, of Christ to be the living members, the family of God, and uh, very close relative to him based on your own choices. Let us rejoice in this liturgy. Let us think differently and pray sincerely from our hearts to be living members through the obedience because he said, those who will do the will of, of my father, I am my, fa my brothers and my sisters. May the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you from now and forever and ever.